So you see, you can do this and you can continue in different harmonics. The point here is to do a little flexibility exercise and once you're there on a position, you slide up to the next position. This exercise has really worked on my students that were struggling with high register. So as I said before, when we were practicing low register and when we're practicing range in general, it's always step by step, step by step, step by step. Take advantage, if you're playing the trombone or the bass trombone, or any instrument with a slide really, take advantage of the slide, you know, so stay at the same position, stay with the same kind of air, but just like slide up if you want to practice the high register and slide down if you want to practice the low register. If it doesn't work, do it again. 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 This is how you get better at playing an instrument. I always say the trombone is not only music, the trombone is not only an art, it is also a craft, a craft that you need to, to learn how to master, it's some different techniques, doing the right techniques. I always talk about not taking shortcuts. And the bass trombone and low brass in general, the trombone also, but the bass trombone even more, um, it is a sport, it is absolutely a sport. You have to think like an elite athlete. An elite athlete doesn't learn how to jump uh, two meters high the first day that he learns how to jump, right? So first you need to jump this high, and this is how it works in the Olympics. You first try on this height, if you manage to go, then you go to another height, and if not, then you eliminate it, right? You have three shots. When you practice the trombones, you have more than three shots and you're not eliminated from anything. You just have to keep on going. What I'm saying is that you can't possibly practice the super high register when you're not mastering the, um, you know, some lower notes. So I had a student yesterday and we were having a Skype lesson. If you're interested in Skype lessons, by the way, just like send me an email. We can arrange this, although I don't accept too many people because I don't have so much time, but send me an email and maybe we can arrange something. But anyway, he was practicing something that needed to go to the high E flat. So we practiced it and he couldn't make it to the high E flat. So I was like, okay, let's play a scale to the high E flat, um, a slow scale with a slow glissando. And he wasn't able to get there from the, from the D to the high E flat, it didn't work. So I said, okay, well, let's try to play a D scale and he couldn't get there. And then a D flat scale and he couldn't get there and finally we went to the C was okay and the B flat was alright but it was not amazing and I was like why are you playing this piece that goes to the high E flat when you cannot master the high B flat and this student also stru uh, struggles with performance anxiety he gets uh, he gets uh, scared, so we always talk about this, because he gets scared, he gets nervous when he gets on stage for an audition and for a recital, a class recital, and he's taking lessons with me just to up his game, but I'm like, that's cool, but you need to take things step by step. There is no way in the world, there is no way in the world that you can feel relaxed going on stage playing a piece where you know there's some notes you cannot play. You know, that obviously you're going to think about this note before playing it. It's going to stress you out, you're going to make mistakes before. You're going to try to play it, you're not going to be able to. It's not just going to damage your image as a, as a trombone player, but it just, it just cuts the music. You know, like, when we want to avoid playing so many mistakes. I mean, mistakes are okay, they, they happen, but for this kind of thing, when it's range, you can see the players sweating and struggle, and it's just unpleasant to watch. It's like... Why would I go? Why would I pay for a concert? This was not a concert, it was a class audition, but still, you know, like, why would I go and see this class audition to see students suffer because they're playing notes that they can't play? Play the notes that you can play. Only play the pieces where you know that you can play all the notes. If you choose a piece that goes to a low C and you cannot play a low C, play another piece. If you choose a piece that goes to a high E flat and you can't play comfortably a low E flat, nor can you play comfortably a D, a D flat, a C or a B flat, 
or a B, I don't know why I always skip the B, but you can't play those notes comfortably, then play another piece. Be humble a little bit. You know, like be a little bit humble just to tell yourself, okay, maybe not this audition, maybe not this recital, maybe next one. It's okay. You know, I don't have to be playing the most difficult piece. You only have to play a piece that sounds good, that's beautiful, and where you can flow where you can be happy with the music because it flows, because it is challenging, but it's still something that you can do. So don't get on stage and play something with an E-flat when you can't master it. And this goes back to this exercise that we are practicing now. I wanted to do this video. What I'm doing now, actually, I'm recording some exercise and then talking, because otherwise I get dry mouth and uh, uh, I prefer to do it that way. So usually I edit it and I put back into the front <laughs> what I'm saying and afterwards playing the exercise but actually I was going to show you a high register exercise and then it got me thinking you know like okay you have to do it step by step I'm gonna show you some exercises throughout the week in the next couple of weeks of high register exercise so really working through that high register but you know what if you can't play a B flat do not um, do not ask me for exercises to play high F's because it just doesn't work that way and that's that's a problem that I see with a lot of students um, especially when they're part of a class where other players can play some notes that they can't play and so all these exercises are step by step you know so we use the slide as the perfect tool to slide from one note to another so keeping the same embouchure keeping the same structure kind of keeping the same airflow. Of course, it will change a little bit, but from one semitone to another, the, the changes is, is very small. So, of course, if you play from a low F to a high F, there will be some movement. There will be the movement of the jaw that we talk about every single time I make a video, practically. There will be some movement of the air, of course. There will be some movement of the aperture a little bit. There will be, because of this jaw, there's going to be some movement in the different kind of air that we put in the instrument. Um, but that's we're, we're talking about three octaves here. And in fact, if you, we talk about only one octave, okay, also, but if we talk about a semitone, then there shouldn't be any difference. So why is it that you can play a B flat and you can't play a B? Half of it is psychological, and the other half is just muscle building. And how do you build that muscle? You just play the same exercise on the B flat as you would on the, on the B natural. And then you just take advantage of that slide. If you need to play the B flat in third position, play that B flat in third position because it will be easier to slide from the third position to the second position for that B natural, that high B natural, than it would be to play the B flat on the first position and then go because you can't gliss to it. And we're, we're talking about glissing to semitones. It will be easier for you to work glissing the semitones, glissing from the B flat to the B natural. And then once you get comfortable with that B natural, gradually, once you play long tones and everything, and your muscles are made for that B natural, you start taking confidence in yourself that you can play that B natural, then, you know, you can make the shift of playing the B flat on the first position, and then the B natural on the second position. So I kind of play through an exercise, it's like a flexibility exercise, you play the flexibility exercise on how however many harmonics you want, depends where you want to build your 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 high register. Here we're kind of we were kind of building to the high B flat. I will make a separate video where I make more vi uh, more exercises. I thought it was really important for me to talk on this video. Uh, I'm sorry if I interrupted the the flow of the exercise or whatnot, but it is really important for you to understand, for me to know that you understand that you can only build your high register if you go step by step, if you're patient and if you're humble. Uh, and that's really, really important. And don't go trying to play high Fs if you cannot play high B flats. The same way I always say in the low register, you know, like step by step. Play that low F, you know, like that low F in 6 or, or with the first trigger. If that works well, slides down to the E natural. If that works well, go to the E flat. If that works well, slide slowly to the D. Construct, build, build your register. You know, uh, 
high range uh, range in general range in brass instruments in general is not about playing high and it's not about playing low it's about having a consistent sound quality throughout the register of your instrument right so this is why uh, this is why it pisses me off actually I'm gonna do a mini rant I saw some videos of some popular people on YouTube giving you some uh, advice on how to how to play very high and they just squeak it and pinch it and they change the position same thing for playing low they switch mouthpieces to a 0G which is a contrabass trombone mouthpiece and even on contrabass trombone it's a big fucking mouth oops I'm gonna try to beep that out uh, big mouthpiece um, uh, to, play, to play those pedal notes and those shortcuts are very popular because uh, it'll make you play very low and very high quite easily, right? I mean, everybody can put your shoulders up, squeak, and like, or just play, take a tuba mouthpiece, put it in your trombone, like, pfft, flap your lip, and somehow there's going to be something that kind of sounds low. This for me is not good range. This will not take you anywhere. If you want to apply for college, if you want to apply for university, if you want to apply for an orchestra, if you want to apply. Uh, for anything or if you just want to play nice pieces on stage or at home make little videos whatever um, you know you need to you need to buckle up and practice like a craftsman would uh, I, this this is it's a phenomenon that I'm actually writing about right now I'm writing a book about it's called the 5 a.m. musician and it's not only about practicing at 5 a.m. like I always say on Instagram it's about uh, I get up very early in the morning and I, I get out of the house around half past five. When I was in Berlin I had a long drive to my practice room and I would get out of the house at five and I would see all these people working in the street, um, you know, like cleaning the street and taking out the garbage and all that stuff and there are people that are essential for society, like it's not an under job, that's not what I'm saying, but they, they do those jobs mostly because they need to live, to survive, to pay for food and rent for them and their families and whatnot. And again, it's a very important job. If nobody was there to pick up the trash, then we would have pests, rats, and we would die. Awful deaths with diseases and whatnot. They're, they're very important jobs. But on my way there, I was thinking of all my friends and all the people and some students and people that I know that are playing music. They want to be musicians because they say they're passionate about playing music. They're passionate about music and yet they cannot get up before 10 a.m. to practice and then they might practice an hour and then get lazy and then they want to take shortcuts they want they want to play jazz well they're gonna like buy a book with licks and they're gonna go on internet and find some licks because they don't want to go through the hardcore process of listening to a jazz solo and like really integrating it into your head into your mind into your heart and you know like writing down the solo for yourself no they want to take shortcuts they want to you to teach them how do you play on the blues what do you play what notes well they don't go and do the research themselves and it's the same for a lot of musicians uh, practicing they want more tricks they want more tips they want shortcuts because they don't have the patience to practice on something that they say they're passionate about I didn't want this uh, video to turn into a rant because this is not what this is about. I really wanted to do a high register <laughs> workout today. Um, and then high register always like, it always pinches me a little bit. High register, low register, uh, playing fast, triple tongue and whatnot. Because although those are important, because although those are important aspects of our playing, undeniably, sometimes it is a tool for certain musicians to compare themselves with other ones. I'm a better person than you because I can play high. I'm more popular than you because I can play high. Or it's amazing to, to hear those people screaming in their trumpets and trombones or whatnot. It becomes like uh, a part of music that, that, that I don't really, really like. And, and, and uh, you know, and maybe it's easy for me to say because I can play high and because I can play low and I can play fast. Um, but like the musicians that I do admire the most, this is why Wynton Marsalis was always my idol when I was growing up and even now probably. It's because he could play so high and he can play so low and he can play so fast. Um, 
but it is always done with musical integrity. It is always done with elegance. It is always done with grace. It is always done in the aim of making beautiful music. You're gonna play high and grungy because because it, it triggers a certain emotion to hear that trumpet sound, you know, or like you're gonna do this really nervous jazz piece or whatever, and it's really fast and and it, and it's really cool. But it's always in purpose of the music. And this is kind of what I'm wanting to teach you here when I make a video on playing high register. I don't want to have more people sending me videos to f give feedback on double B flats up there where it is just basically a little squeak. It's like an acophone or it's like a, you know, like a, a phone. It, it just doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good and I don't care if you can play double B flats, don't send me videos of your double B flats, please. Not on Instagram, not by email, not on anything. Because I'm not interested in it. And I want you to be in the spirit of... I want to play with a large sound in the high register because my purpose is to play this piece. This piece has a high E flat at the end. I, 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 I want to put it because it's like very operatic or whatever, it just sounds amazing to play that high uh, E flat, fine, let's practice that high E flat. But if you're not able to play a high B flat, we're going to practice the high B flat first, and then the B, and then the E flat, and then the C, and then the D flat, and then the D, and then the E flat, right? Um, that's it for today's video, because I could talk more and more and more and more. Again, I, I was aiming of doing a high register uh, video. I don't know how I'm going to name that video. If you have any feedback or any comments or whatever, please put them in the comments below this video. If you have any tips uh, for me, actually, uh, feedback so that I can make better videos, better content. If there's some subjects that you would like us to touch on, uh, then please do send me a message. Uh, you can do so down. If you want to receive all my PDFs of the exercises, you can, um, you can register to my Patreon. Uh, it's quite cheap. I try to make it as cheap as possible. Uh, not for free because why am I not giving stuff for free anymore? One very good reason. First of all, I find that people asking me for free stuff never say hello, please and thank you. Which is kind of normal in today's age on social media. But it's also like when you're ungrateful for something, then you're not in the same mood and you're not going to take as much advantage of the material. If you pay 10 euros, 10 dollars for some music, you're actually going to print it, you're going to put it on your stand, you're going to practice it, you're going to send it to me and I'm going to give you some feedback. If it's free, then maybe you do it, maybe you don't do it, maybe you have to do it, maybe you don't do it properly, you don't care, you didn't pay for it anyway. Um, and I found it for myself also, uh, for different things that I was learning when I had free courses, when I had free stuff, free materials, I wouldn't take it as seriously as when I actually paid for it. Also, especially when I didn't have much money and I had to pay for something, then I would go all in on it. If I had to pay a hundred euros for a lesson, which I did many, many times, I would go there, I would record the lesson, then I would listen to the lesson, I would take notes, etc, etc. I would make it a real like, okay, it's a hundred euros, but let's get the most out of it. Obviously, I can't remember everything, so let's record, let's take notes, let's build exercises upon what I learned, etc, etc. And, and, and that's great, you know, but if I had like a free lesson, maybe I wouldn't be so intense about it. And, and it's horrible because uh, uh, I'm a, a little bit of shame of saying this in front of the camera because it seems like only money matters when no, it doesn't. What matters is to become better musicians, better trombone players, better brass players, whatever it is that you play. Um, and learn and continue learning forever and ever because we're only ever going to be students. You know, like there is no such thing as mastery for music. Um, you, can, you can always learn more and more and more. And so this is why I don't do free material. Sometimes I do some little giveaways. But I don't send, I used to send everything for free in my email list. Um, so yeah, if you want to join the Patreon, you know, you can. If you can't afford it, I completely understand. Um, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I am going to be posting some more 
uh, high register exercises in the next videos. I was planning it on doing it today, as I said, I've been blabbering about for 20 minutes now, so I'm just gonna press the stop button here. But do subscribe to the channel, do press this little bell button so that you're notified every time I post new content, especially now I'm gonna post a lot of high register things. The reason why I'm doing high register now, I did some polls on Instagram and 98% of the people wanted high register stuff. So I am going to post more uh, high register exercises, whole range exercises. I'm actually writing a book. It's called The Big Bone Book and volume one is going to be range. Uh, it's going to be out soon. I will tell you when. If you want to be notified when it's out, then just send me an email. Um, this is my email here, the trombone lab at gmail.com. And yeah, that's it. Have a nice day. Have a nice practice. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to record a proper high register exercise and we're going to do some work together. Take care. Ciao.